That's the bad girl. Beautiful truck. Wish it was manual. Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. This is 803 Garage and we're going to be finishing off the inverter install by installing one of these inline ANL fuses. Let's get to it. We are also going to correct the angle of the inverter. Also, I want to be building a center console because I'm tired of squishing my uh, wash fluid underneath my seat. But yes. So this is what we're going to be doing. We got the nut, the washer, the, the lug, everything here. And um, this is what the fuse looks like. It's 150 amp, which is good for a thousand watts. If it was a car stereo, it'd probably go like one, uh, 175 or something. Something around that range. So, cause you're always gonna ask a little bit more power from your amp than what can be there. And depending on the length of the line. So if it was a 12 foot line or an 18 foot line, I would probably go to the 175 route, even for your inverter. So this little guy, you put the both lugs on either end, there's two fuses in here. So I'm gonna take this out, wrap, wrap it in tape and actually tape it to the power line on the inside where the batteries are, just to protect it, but it's there for it to be nice and close. This actual setup has these uh, plastic rubbers. I'm gonna silicone these in so they don't pop off like this one here. Simple as this, just with a little bit of silicone. Now we can mount this fuse. I'm just gonna zip tie it to uh, what's existing underneath the box. This is a quick example of the types of fuses that you will find in your stereo systems or within your car. Seat removal requires two bolts to be removed on either side of the seat, and then we just lift it off and we have the battery access. And time to open this up and start attaching things. Right here, I am planning exactly where I'm going to cut the wire to install the inline fuse. Next, I'm going to strip off a little bit of the insulation from the wire to crimp on a lug. Now, in this case, I want to make sure that the lug is in the same line or same level with the original lug, so they both batch. Very important that we don't have to twist the wire to get it to line up. And I always either heat shrink or use electrical tape to insulate any kind of uh, electrical terminations. Now we just install it onto the inline fuse, the ANL fuse, and it's 15.9 pounds of torque which is not very much a little more than just hand tight really it depends on how strong you are but if you are in doubt you can get uh, a small torque wrench that will do this kind of work otherwise you just make sure everything is nice and tight to the point where the uh, lock washer is flat and at that point you're good and tight if you over tighten it you could risk cracking the inline fuse casing now we're just doing the other termination to go into the uh, inline fuse there. And that just comes from the inverter to the, uh, again, I'm gonna say inline fuse, just saying that too much. Um, and I usually put this, as I said in the previous video, eight or six inches away from the actual battery terminal. That way, if there's ever a problem, you only have to worry about those eight inches or the six inches of wire heating up or burning up before the fuse goes. Right here, I am siliconing those rubber pieces for the bottom of the fuse to secure it. That way they don't short out because we are in a battery box and I want to minimize the risk. Now this is only a $16 item off of Amazon and this is a $100,000 truck. 20 bucks to make sure your device is secure. I'll do that every single time. Inverters can run hot depending. This one doesn't. It has thermal protection, but even an older one, you could have a risk of that. It all depends. As I said, however, having an inline fuse will fix any of that overrun of voltage or amperage that it would otherwise burn up your unit. Right here, I have a second fuse, as I said earlier in the video, and I talked about zip tying it. I decided to uh, tape it because it's less restrictive whereas tape flexes, zip ties don't necessarily. I didn't want to crack the fuse and break it. Now we're just going to install the fuse and get this whole unit 
secure, but up and running properly. Again, all my terminations, like uh, ratcheting down the, uh, the positive end of the battery, I make sure always hand tight and secure. Okay, so she's all straightened out. She's straight. Fuses in, you can close this up. That power's on. As you can see there, boom. So we'll take this and reinstall the seat. And then test it out. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a bunch of tools. We'll start with the smallest, a charger. I always tend to plug in the charger first, so the power is going to it, so it's not really a shock to the battery. Don't know if that makes a difference, but I would think it does. And you can see here, the red light is on. There you can see it, so it's charging. We only have two bars and a battery. Okay, so let's unplug that. That test is a pass. We have a multi-tool, can be used as a grinder, whatever, router. You do all sorts of stuff with it. It's only six amps. Does it work? Yep. It works. Okay, next thing. I don't know how powerful this is because it's worn off. Yep, she's totally worn off. I assume it would be about the same. This is an old worn out drill, so it probably pulls more amperage. As you can tell, she's worn out, she smells bad. Typical, typical tool. Now we have the overload device. Oh, knocking stuff over. Okay. No, that's not covered. I'll do that, and then I'll do this, and then we have it. Okay. This thing is 15 amps. The uh, Inverter is nine, I'm sorry, eight, and it should not work. That's it, done. So she is good, she works, safety works. Ugh. Let's go down here. You'll see that it says error. You just power this down, that's it. Turn it back on, and she'll say the voltage, and at that point, all you have to do is plug in your desired tool that will not sh uh, turn on the safety. And there you go. Cool. And it shows the power rating, what it's using. So now it's using, I'm guessing that's amperage. So I was at like 5.3, which would be equivalent to like 6 amps if you round up. And if it's under load, it'll probably go higher. So that's it, guys. The inverter is now installed, it's powered up. We tested it, it works, we overloaded it, it shuts off, and it still works after that, so we're good to go. Um, if you are to do this and you're not sure, have somebody professional do it for you. Um, this is a very simple thing to do. If you wanted to, to make it even more safe, is to uh, isolate the negative terminal, and that would shut the circuit down when you add the fuse on the one side, and then when you hook it all back together, it'll work. Um, it makes it a bit more safer. And generally, there's a lot of amperage in those three batteries being in uh, parallel. Um, but now you know, you've seen it demonstrated, it works. And when I'm on a job site, if I need to charge my tools, which is the whole point of this, boom, we're good. Also, I can run uh, tools with limited amperage, like say six or eight, something like a small grinder, not a giant grinder like you saw. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, have fun. Be safe. Peace.